This mini lecture will look at evaluating support material. We previously talked about how to gather support material for your speeches and there are a variety of different ways and places where you can look for that information. But once you find stuff, how do you know if it's good or if it's hmm, maybe not so good? Well, as Abraham Lincoln said, don't believe everything you read on the internet just because there's a picture with a quote next to it. Let's think about that. Is there any possible way that Abraham Lincoln could have said that? Considering that he lived during the 1800s and was president during our American Civil War, I don't think that he said anything about the internet. You need to take the same approach when you're looking at the information that you're using for your speech. Now, have you ever had someone tell you that they heard something and you think there is no way it could be true? You know, we hear information all the time. Nothing makes me more crazy when someone says, research says, well, what research? Where did you get that research? Who did the research? What kind of questions did they ask? It's always good to be a little skeptical, skeptical about information that you read and information that you hear. There are many instances when we hear only part of the story or that these facts are misrepresented. So how do we evaluate the information that we're going to use for our speech? As the speaker, you want to be credible. You increase credibility when you use critical information. It's your responsibility as the speech preparer and the speech giver to make sure that your sources are credible, accurate, recent, and unbiased, or at least recognize the bias. There's always bias in every source. And the key is to understand that bias and to address it if it is a problem. So what do I mean by those things? Well, is the information credible? The information from a trusted source. For example, your speech is about heart disease and you cite information from the American Heart Association and the American Medical Association. If I were a listener and you told me that you re retrieved your information from one or both of those two sources, I would probably evaluate that information to be critical. Now, sure, it's possible that um, something is a little different or that as time goes on, we discover that the information was not quite the way we thought, but those would be two trusted sources for a speech about heart disease. Secondly, is the information accurate? Here we want to know, is the information true? Perhaps you found similar information in both of your sources, the American Heart Association and the American Medical Association, about some information about heart disease. That would lead me, as a listener, to think that your information was accurate. Is your information recent? The information is not old and outdated. Now, this can be a little tricky depending on your topic. But for most topics, we want to use information that is more recent. Now, let's say that we are doing a speech about the uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa, and I find information that was laying in my house in an, from an encyclopedia that was in, published in 1980. I would say that given that topic, that that would probably be fine information to use, but if we can find more recent information, we would want to use that. And finally, is the information unbiased, which means the author or the person who is responsible or the organization responsible for the information does not have an ulterior motive or something to gain from providing the information. So in this case, both the American Heart Association and the American Medical Association are somewhat biased in that they are nonprofit organizations that seek to promote their cause. However, they are viewed as credible sources. One way that we can help to evaluate information is by completing an annotated bibliography. Perhaps some of you have done this in an English or a writing class, and I'm perhaps sad or happy to report that you'll have an opportunity to do that in this class as well. Now you will not be required to complete an annotated bibliography for every source, but just for a couple of your sources for two of your speeches. So what is an annotated bibliography? 
This is more than just an MLA citation. An annotated bibliography gives greater detail about a source. And there are four parts that you need to have for your annotated bibliography. First, you need the citation. This could be an MLA or APA format and something that you would have to do anyways. So that's not so bad. Secondly, you want to summarize the source. What type of information, what information did you find, perhaps why did you decide to use this source? The third component is called credibility, and it's broken down into four units. We want to address if the information that we found is credible, accurate, recent, and is there any bias. This is something that we should address for each one of these criteria, and it does not need to be lengthy, perhaps a few sentences. The final part of the annotated bibliography, and this part is very important, is the oral citation. This is how you plan to say the source in your speech. Now as we move into next week, we'll be looking at how do you orally cite your sources. Many of you may be familiar with parenthetical citation if you write a paper, but that would seem kind of silly to say it that way if you were delivering a speech. So we will talk about how do you orally cite your source? How do you say your source during your speech? That would be the last part of the annotated bibliography. And that is something that can easily be copied and pasted from your preparation outline to your annotated bibliography or the other way around. So in this course, you must complete an annotated bibliography for some of the sources. For the informative speech, you need to complete it for two of your four sources. And the persuasive speech, you also needed to complete it for two sources. Now information about how to write an annotated bibliography is located in the week four module that will give you a more detailed explanation and also provides you with an example. So you should review this information and as always if you have questions, concerns, you can post them in the discussion or you can send me an email. As a final thought, I wanted to share this with you. A friend of mine posted this on Facebook and her son, who is the same age as my son, uh, and she were having a conversation. And Julian said, there are 2.1 lawyers for every person who needs one. I think I need to think of another profession. And my friend said, is that accurate? Where did you hear that? To which he said, the Simpsons. And my friend said, well, that's not an accurate source. And Julian said, but Lisa said it. It wasn't like it was Homer. I don't know that The Simpsons is a very accurate source, whether it was Lisa or Homer who said it, and we're talking about some of the information we need. So I hope that you have an opportunity to think about the information that you use and to be a little skeptical. There's a lot of information floating around out there, especially on some of these open internet sources, and just because it's on the internet doesn't make it true.